want to say about great respect for this man. You know, when I see this, I know there's been pain behind it. It doesn't just come. I've been there and I know there has been sleepless nights and to give birth to this, there was pain. Yes. If you don't believe me, you must just ask your mommy when she gave birth to you. Was she laughing and praising the Lord? And you too, when you came, you were laughing. No. Ladies, I thought I'm going to get out. Come on, sir, say something. Yeah. And, uh, you know, if you come into this world and you're not crying, they smack you to make you cry. So the introduction to this world of tears. And I know there's been tears in this place. And Pastor Mary, I believe that you can kickstart a general judge. Yeah. And you know, fly for 15 hours in the air, and when it gets to its destiny, they find it doesn't even have engines. Sure. Doesn't she, who's, who doesn't get kickstarted when she's leaving? Yeah. Sorry, man, using the wrong fuel. <laughs> Amen. Yes, my name is George Hislop, and I, I came to do my apprenticeship in Durban, in Yellow Park, as a builder and all that. And I was just telling my wife, I got three things from Durban. Uh, I got my building trade, and then I qualified as an alcoholic. <laughs> then I found my wife. Uh, people will say, aren't you ashamed to mention things like that? I'm not here about myself, I'm here to advertise Jesus. Amen. That you can have faith in that child of yours that's on drugs today. Amen. That God can choose you from the back Amen. when you think you don't qualify. Yeah. And people have looked down upon you. Yeah. And he comes and he lifts you up. Amen. But you mustn't say, look what I've done. What must you say? What the Lord, what the Lord has done. Amen. Praise the Lord. Man. You know, I don't know. Uh, the praise and worship seem to confirm the word today. The Lord. Yes. I, I want to share on, we sometimes fail in the process. Let me give a foolish example. Pastor Peter can invite a prophet that's like Samuel. They said about Samuel that not one of his words fell to the ground. What he spoke came to pass. And a prophet will come to, uh, to you and say, my sister, you're going to be a millionaire. And you're rejoicing for the world. Because it's confirmation something that you have the spirit of the four lepers. You haven't got the literacy, you've got their spirit. That one of them said, why sit here and die? I think that should be in every Christian. If, I always say, if you're born in Mkuku, you know what's Mkuku, a shack. <clears throat> you didn't have the choice to be born. But at 82, don't die in the same shape. Yeah. You should have that in you that you say, why sit here and die? You know, I like songs like, I believe I can fly. I dream about it every day, I believe I can fly. I believe I can build this church somewhere else. I believe I can do it. I dream about it every day. I believe I can build it. Sometimes you've got to speak to yourself. Because no one's going to take a day off to come and encourage you. You know they can put you in a room and say they're going to test your IQ. And they test your IQ and they say to you, my boy, uh, you will not make it in life. Yo, elevator doesn't get to the top, so you'll never make it. <laughs> but when you come out of there, you tell yourself, me, I can do all things in Christ who gives me strength. Yes. And I know my God does not make mistakes. Yes. So I will not die where I am. You've got to tell yourself, your I can is better than your IQ. Because you will know that God takes the nobodies. He'll take a street sweeper and he'll fill that street sweeper with his spirit and do amazing things that I, with a title pastor, 
Start getting jealous. The time people are going to say to you, who do you think you are? She's forgot what she used to do. I haven't forgotten, but my God has forgot. I know where he brought me from, but my God has forgot, and he's the one left in the world. Amen. Don't die where you are. Especially our nation, don't die where you are. Amen. Is there another church locked up in Pastor Peter's life? Is there another church locked up in there? I don't want to get to heaven and I say I've built a church and the Lord will say, where's the other five of them? Where the five? We sometimes stay in the process because there's a process that must take place before you get to where you go. If I want to make it simple, there's a desert to cross before you get to the promised land. There's a race to be run and there are victories that come after the race, not before. So there's a race to run, and there's a desert to cross before you get to the, the first generation that left Egypt, they failed in the process in the desert. Yes, you see. Because I have studied what made the great great, and I've come to one conclusion that they had to go through the desert to make it. A foolish example again. Moses comes back to Egypt. He killed an Egyptian and he buried him in a shallow grave. He must have been thinking, if I do it to them one by one, I must deliver my people. I'm going to do it. And you know what the Lord said? It's not by my, no, my power, Moses, but it's by my spirit. Yes. He comes back, and then he raises his rod. Water's turning to blood. Frogs are filling the king's palace. There's lice, there's fleas, there's hail. I would love to do that. But there's 40 years in the desert first that equals me raising that rod in the kingdom. In Acts chapter 7, when Stephen is going to be stoned, he says Moses was eloquent in speech and in everything. He learned that in the best of Egypt. Yet after 40 years, when God comes to him through the burning bush, he says, may I start, I know nothing. And then God says, now I'm going to use you. It's not when you're jumping and when pastor says, I'm going to plant you there and make it and say, yes, I can do it. Yeah. It's when you're going fast for 40 days and you say, pastor, I don't know whether you're choosing the right man or the right woman. And God says, I'm going to use you. There's a process we must go through. Even a chocolate cake. My wife bakes a lot. I so said, what did you invert? This man is talking about cakes. <laughs> There's a process in everything. I try and be simple that a class one child was young. I think that's how Jesus was. Lilies, sparrows. She'll get all the ingredients there. Right? I taste baking powder if it's not self raising. I, I, I taste the self raising flour doesn't taste so good. Vanilla isn't that, no. A raw egg, I don't know, thank you. And, and I think it was Sister Mary, quoted Romans 8 to me. Hey, they were. Then she starts working it together. Hey. All for the good. <laughs> this bad in your life where you are abused and people laugh at you, went to the police station, they didn't even notice what you're saying. And you say, Lord, where were you? He was right there. It's the making of the mighty. Why? So tomorrow, you'll be able to talk to young girls and say, girls, you see, I'm here. I went through all that and God lifted me up. You can make it too. We are the salt and the light of the world. God is depending on us. She works it all together for the good. And the oven is on, and then she puts it in and she sets the timer. I can't bake, but I just watch, I learn with my eyes. And she turns the heat on, my brother. It's pale, and the heat makes it change and rises. That's why he puts you through the fire. And it starts developing, it comes up. Then, an amazing thing happened. The timer rings, 
and she takes it out. Then she takes a sharp instrument and pushes it right in the middle of the cake, the poor cake. <laughs> and she pulls this out and she looks at it and, and there's something stuck over there, the dough is still stuck there. And she says, oh, she takes it and she puts it back and she sets the timer again. There's a process taking part. Then she takes it out and lets it cool and she mixes that icing and she gives it to me because I'm a builder and a, and a plaster. <laughs> So I start plastering the thing. I take my fork, I turn it upside down, I start designing the thing. Then Pastor Peter comes. Will you have a cup of tea? He says yes. And then she cuts his cake. And he says, I've never tasted a piece of cake like this. I'm thinking, you don't know what that cake has been through my brother. <laughs> Why am I telling you all this? Someone will go to the fire and then come and stand here and they'll talk to you and you'll know that they know what they're talking about. Then a young man says, I want to be like Pastor Peter. Ask Pastor Peter where does he come from? What's his track record that he ends up here and he talks to your spirit? Something he has been. God is amazing. Hebrews chapter 12 says, he disciplines those he loves. He breaks you up before you can lose. Mm. And you know why your son is on drugs and alcohol today? It's because of what he's got inside. Paul said, we have this great treasure in the end And if the enemy can get to it, my brother, and take it from you, and then He's just roaming in the street and he's happy with that. Because each of us in this world are born, born for a purpose. <clears throat> no one in this world has got your fingerprints. Why? Because you're unique and you're special. You came into this world because there was a problem for you to fix. Don't die. The Bible says when David had completed his purpose for his generation, he fell asleep with his forefathers. Don't rob your generation. There's something in you, young people, that no one's got. Thank you, Jesus. Even Pastor George hasn't got what you've got in there. There's a place where I'm busy for hours trying to fix something, and you peep over my shoulder and you say, Pastor, just give me two minutes. And you say, I move one side, you touch two places, and the thing is fixed. I say, my boy, how did you... You say, look, Pastor, I just, I just know. You came with that thing. Don't die with that man. Why sit here and die? They said the four lepers said, I don't think so. There was one leper that told me, they can't say it at the same time. Yeah. One leper said, hey guys, why sit here and die? If you go into town, they're eating babies. If you stay here, we die. Let's go to the enemy's camp. If they kill us, we die. Yeah. Esther, I'm going to the king yeah. if I perish. Something, there must be a turning point in your life where you say, enough is enough. I'm not taking this anymore. I was talking to Mickey yesterday, and we were talking about how we used to drink. But I drank even better than him. <laughs> I used to open a 750 bottle and squash the lid because I won't need the lid. I don't. Yeah, I don't. Yes, it's true. You see your son, he can come out. Amen. You must Amen. tell him, Amen. you know what's happening with you, son. Amen. It's because of what you got, that's why the devil wants to kill you. And the devil is a liar. Yes, Amen. Yeah. Amen. You go through some things where you say, Lord, where are you now? I don't understand, he didn't call us to understand. He called us to believe. Amen. That though he slain me, yet will I trust him. Yes, me, I know my Redeemer lives. When he must come and redeem me, he'll come and redeem me. We fail in the process. As I was saying, a, 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 a pastor will call the prophet and he say, you're going to be a millionaire. And everything is, seems it's working towards that. Next thing there's chaos. You lose your job. They're coming to take your furniture. And then what do we say? False prophet. Mm -mm. Not a false prophet. 
You're going through the process. You're going through the desert to be able to qualify to handle the promised land. And each of us here have got a promised land that God has made for us to reach. Don't die where you are. And then after some time, things start changing. And you see it's coming to light again. It looks like this millionaire story is going to work. It will, it will, but he humbles you and he breaks you in as a stallion is broken for you to be able to put your glory, your three-year-old daughter, on a heavy size stallion that has been broken in. If it's not broken, you cannot put your glory in. And besides, if before you are broken, God cannot put his glory in you. You've got to be broken. Yes, He's killing the pride, the eye in us. Let's read Habakkuk chapter 2. Ah, they were I Thank you, Lord. Yeah. Verse 1. Habakkuk is complaining here. I know none of y'all have complained. Me, I've complained this thing that, you know what, the wicked seem to be prospering. These travelers are riding cars that I only dream about them, never written. And they trust me, and they don't even know God. How come is it, Lord? Why are you quiet on this matter? Why are you quiet? And then in chapter 2, verse 1, he says, I will stand at my watch and station myself on the ramparts. I will look, listen at this English. I will look to see what he will say. How? You will look to see what he's going to say. And you're not mentioning your ears. Have you ever spoken to someone a revelation that you got overnight? And they were asking you questions and you tell them like this and this. They say, oh, now I see. And yet you show them nothing. You just spoke to them. They're not talking about these eyes. They're talking about other eyes. The spiritual eyes. Now I see. I like preaching to Zulu people. I don't know what their pastor told me about two ideas. Um, and you know what? They don't say amen, pastor. You know what they say? They say, mm, mm, mm. And you know and that you know that the word is hitting inside. Because I can say, Amen, Amen, finish, pastor. Amen, Amen. My rose is waiting. I go, Amen, man. But you should say, mm, mm, mm. Like you see. Like you see. I'm here for that. Let's leave it with me, the interpreter. Yeah. I will look to see what he will say to me. And what answer am I to give? To this complaint. You know when the Lord answers, sometimes he doesn't even answer what you've been talking about. <coughs> then the Lord answered. Hey, hey what? Write down the vision come or the on, revelation. Come on, come on, sir. Make the claim on tablets. Mm. So that the uh, herald or the reader may run with it. Mm. Okay? Thanks. For the revelation awaits an appointed time now. Mm. That's why I was expecting it the third month and it doesn't come. It's an appointed time, the fullness of time. When the fullness of time came, the Messiah was born. For the revelation awaits an appointed time. It speaks of the end, not the beginning. It speaks of the end and will not prove false. Those that linger, wait for it. For those who wait upon the Lord, it is them that will sow an eagle's wings. Run and not grow weary or walk and not faint. Sow an eagle's wings. I mustn't forget where I was. But let me just take you on a little other simple thing. This little two year old girl is going to take a flight with her father in a plane. They jump in the plane and she says, Dad, can I sit by the window, please? And the father says, sit by the window. And when she was walking to the airport, she was saying, Dad, high buildings, big buildings. And he said, yes, they call them skyscrapers. 
So she said, oh, okay. And she jumped in the plane and the plane took off. She's looking through the window. She says, Dad, small people and small cars and small as it went higher, it became smaller and smaller. Those who wait upon the Lord will soar on eagle's wings. Start looking from above from where God looks and the skyscraper becomes small. That mountain you are trying to climb becomes small. And the father said, no, it's the same. You know what I mean? As of, she said, no, daddy. Small people, small cars. If you wait upon the Lord, he will lift you up that you start looking down and you see it as he sees it. Amen. Amen. You put your God there and let the skyscraper become small. It waits on a point of time. Yes. It will suddenly come and not delay. Now it says it speaks of the end. So God gives you a vision of the end, Joseph. Where they bow you. And he doesn't show you the pit. Yeah. Let, let me. It's Jesus and John the Baptist. When Jesus turns 30, and because he couldn't do anything till he turns 30, the Jewish law was the time is that you cannot get into the ministry until you're 30 years of age. Jesus was 30, Joseph was 30 when he went there. David was anointed 16, but anointed again at 30 to be king of Israel. Right, and he sees Jesus coming. He says, there is the Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world. Right? He doesn't say there's the Lion of the tribe of Judah. Why? He's going to start as the Lion of the tribe of Judah. He's still the Lamb, but in the Garden of Gethsemane, he swaps it over and he becomes the Lamb. He starts. It's a glorious day. He comes to John the Baptist, he's baptized. First, they argue. John the Baptist says, hey, really speaking, you are supposed to baptize me. He says, hey, let's refer what is written down. And he gets baptized. The Holy Spirit descends on him in the form of a dove and settles and remains. John the Baptist said, he, he who sent me told me, when I see the Holy Spirit come down and I, 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 I settle on him and remain there, I must know that is him. Then, the Bible says, when he comes out as a voice from heaven, this is my son, whom I am well pleased with. And then it says, and the Holy Spirit takes him and leads him. Not the devil. Why? There must be a process before he starts his ministry. I want to just start, man. I don't want pain. Don't give me pain. The man who wrote it is well with my soul. He has lost his wife and his children. And he says it is well with my soul. Leads him into the desert. 40 years he's not eating and he's tempted by the devil. Then he comes, he wins the battle. I'm cutting the long story short. He comes back to the temple. And what does he say? Isaiah 61. He says, now the spirit of the Lord is upon me. Oh. Not before the desert. The mighty are made in the desert. To cut a long story short, because uh, maybe you'll call me back one day, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> now, if I got too long, I will tell you, maybe he's not that man. <laughs> <laughs> the Bible says he's walking, and he comes to the region of Caesarea Philippi, and he stops. He asks his second disciples, who do people say I am? They say, some say Jeremiah, some say John the Baptist, and various prophets, they say. And he says, thank you. But who do you say I am? Peter. You know who it is, Peter? Huh? Uh, uh, 
Uh, say Peter, you are the son of God, the true and the living God. Say, say Peter. You, you know, I love the spirit of Peter. He made mistakes, but hey, walking on water time, I'm coming. If he's going to chop your ear, he's chopping it. And I still believe he was going to the center and this man doubted it. I don't know what. He says, you are the son of the true and living God. You laugh when you're lying in bed, you think you're in the top. And, and Jesus says, man has not revealed this to you, Peter. My father in heaven has given me this. And upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell will not prevail against us. And I'll give you the keys of the kingdom, what you bind on earth is bound in heaven, and what you lose is lost. Then he turns and he says, the Son of Man must be glorified now. He's talking about the cross. I just when you talk about glory, the cloud, and I've got goosebumps, and you know, the little hair I have is standing, and it's going on, man. No, he's talking about the cross. He says, the Son of Man is going to be handed to the Gentiles and evil men. And they're going to question him almost all night, and they'll question him and they'll pull his beard and they'll spit in his face and they will kill him. And on the third day he'll rise again. Peter calls him one side. Peter again. He says, Lord, that will never happen to you. I don't blame him. He had a revelation just now of who Jesus is, man. He's the son of the true and living. How can ordinary men do anything? There were more than 50 soldiers that came for them in the Garden of Eden. And Peter, he says, Peter, get behind me, Satan, says to Peter. You have the thoughts of man and not of God. Man wants comfort. Don't tell me about pain. And yet there's nothing will be birthed without pain. It says you have the thoughts of man and not of God with you. And Peter says, me, I will die with you. And Peter meant it, man. I'll tell you why later. They come for Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane. More than 50 soldiers armed. Jesus asked them, why are you arming? Who are you coming for? Am I a rebel? And Jesus asks them, who do you want? He says, they say, we are Jesus of Nazareth. And he says, I am he. And they fall. When they fall, Peter draws his sword. He thinks, if ever we got them, it's today. <laughs> he knows who he's with. But he doesn't understand. He's no more functioning as a lion of the tribe of Judah. He has turned around. Now he's the lamb. Mm -hmm. He cuts this man's ear off. It falls in the dust. He doesn't blow the dust away. He puts it there. I believe that dust turns into flesh too. I don't know. Because that flesh is sticking on was dust once upon a time too. And he says, Peter, put your sword away. And they go, and Peter, they say, and Peter's confused. Where would you lift one sword against 50 armed? Peter had faith, me, I'd die with him now. As he had said. But Jesus allows them. He says, leave them all, take me. And they take him. And they ask Peter, aren't you one of them? He says, no. You know, he says, I don't know. He's hundred percent right. He doesn't know the lamb. He never understood. He knows the line of the tribe of Judah, who was walking on the waters of Galilee, heal, healing the widow's son outside remains and calling Lazarus from the dead after he's been dead for forty. I know that line of the tribe of Judah. I don't know the lamb. He denies him three times. I don't blame him. Maybe I would have been worse tonight than five times. And they take Jesus, they crucify him. Right? 
He gets up on the third day. What happens? What does he say? He said, now all authority has been given to me over heaven, over earth, Amen. and under the land. Why? It's in the desert where you get it. He says, all the authority has been given to me over heaven, over earth, and under the earth. We run away from the desert, but that's where the mighty are laid. This morning. We got a blessing. The first generation that left Egypt failed because they couldn't cross the border. We're saying there's a race to be run, and there are victories the other side of the race. Don't give me the race, give me the victories. He's got to purify us. The first generation fell. If you don't go through the process, your character will not be able to carry your position or your title. I'm not one for titles, give me big titles. And God says, it's not that, that you say to me. You've got to go to the process to qualify for where you're going, to qualify for your title. We see it every day today in our government. People that haven't got character are sitting on high places and have never. You must, you've got to go to the desert. Otherwise, your character will not be able to carry your position Amen. or your title. You know, Jesus feeds the 5,000. Two fish, five hundred. 5,000 men, not counting women. Even now, if the men stand and the women stand, there's more women here than men. It's everywhere I go. I wonder if in heaven it will be the same as well. I think so. Me too, my brother. Yes. <laughs> yes. So he feeds the 5,000. After they've eaten, they think who else but make him a king by force. He hears this and he disappears and he runs away. Why does Jesus leave, leave that privilege? You know why? He knew he cannot be crowned before the cross. He had to be crossed first and then the crown. That's why after they've crossed him, he raises up and he says, now all authority has been given to me. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. You know what we say when something happens? Why me, Lord? Why me, Lord? You know, 1 Corinthians 10 says you will not be tested yes, more than you can take, man. Make a way. Yes. For you to stand up under it. That's why the scriptures like Romans 8, 26. When you do not know how to pray, the spirit himself intercedes for you with groans that words cannot answer. That can, uh, words cannot utter. That's when tears are running over the bridge of your nose at 12 o'clock at midnight and half past one in the morning. And your husband is lying over there. He doesn't know what you're going through. And you're saying, Lord, is there anyone in the world that's going through what I'm going through? And the tears are running over the bridge of your nose. When you do not know how to pray, the Spirit himself will intercede for you with yeah. groans oh, sure. that words cannot answer. You get up from there in the morning and people will never tell that you were crying last night because you told yourself I'm the head, I'm not the tail. I will not die. I will live to see the glory of God. Yes. I'm confident that I will see the blessings of the Lord in the land of the living. If you brought me through the bear and the lion, surely this uncircumcised thing is coming down to you. You've got to speak to yourself and pump yourself up, man. Two youngsters once said, said to me, hey, Pastor George, are you ever down? I said, go and ask my wife. She'll tell you. Sometimes I don't want to get up. I'll tell you something I'm not supposed to tell you. Sometimes when I don't want to get up, she gets the spirit of Ezekiel in her. She comes and she stands over me and she says, I prophesy to the four ones to blow over these dry bones. Hey, Pastor P. I start feeding you today. I'm telling her, man. Yeah. Yes, sir. I prophesy to this life. You will not die, but you will love. Amen. 
Ah, get up, man, and then kick start it. Get up! Get up! When I'm in the freeway, you never say I kicked it at home. <laughs> Even now, maybe I kick started it and you don't know. Move out, man. Yo. Is that okay, plus the team, man? Hey, you getting me excited, man. They hey, must call him back at least in love. <laughs> Ecclesiastes 9. Mm-hmm. What's the name of this church? Okay. Emmanuel. God is with us. I know, and living word. Yes, right. He never died. He died and he rose again. You know what the Bible says? The Bible. It says, say I'm your dad, boy. I'm your dad. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> Who's dad? No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, you're paying attention. You're paying attention. You see, I did say, say, I'm your dad. You are mine. No. <laughs> Until I die. Okay. Right. I cannot, he cannot inherit anything until I die. And Jesus died. Yeah. And we got the inheritance. Okay. Yeah. Then he rose again. Mm. So that time when I was here in Devon, we used to say someone, hey, that old Shanghai me. Yeah. <laughs> it's old slang. Hey, my brother's laughing at that. <laughs> the devil thought he had won. All the time he died, so we get the inheritance, yeah. and then he rises again. Now we are more than conquerors in Christ. Yeah. Yeah. And we can do all things in him who gives us strength. Jesus is mine. Verse 11. This is the wisest man on God speaking. That time, till we came. Yes. We have the mind of Christ. Yes. It finished. But only that we don't know who we are. That's why we're not functioning the way we should function. Amen. We must Amen. know who we are. We have the mind of Amen. Christ. Amen. Amen. You know the scriptures like that confuse me. It says you will do even greater things than I do. Amen. You know why? We haven't qualified. Hey, Pastor, that Jesus paid it all. <coughs> yes, he did. He paid for the sins when you come up here. And you accept the Lord. He paid for them all. Mm-hmm. But from here to the purpose he's called you for, there's a price to pay. Yeah. I'm not worried about it. Ask the pastor. This thing, this building came up in three days. Oh. No. It came to a stop sometimes whether you wondered, am I doing the right thing? Did God really speak? And yet you're sure you heard God. Ask Abraham. Genesis chapter 12. God had said to Abraham, leave, and he left. Same chapter before it's closed and there was a famine in the land. He's walking, he's going down to Egypt, he comes on the hill, he sees Egypt down there. He looks at his wife and says, listen, when we get there, you're going to say to my sister. Please, my dear, if you love me, you're going to say to my sister. This lady comes in, I think she's about 60 or 65 years of age, man. She comes into Egypt, man. Hey, the officials run to the king and say, you must see who walked into town. <laughs> they say, when the Bible talks about a woman, it talks about the church. The church is going to be glorious. It's coming. The darker it is, the better it is. Isaiah 60. A light shine for the light has come. And the glory of the Lord rises upon you. Amen. Right? Look, darkness covers the earth and thick darkness over the people, but the Lord rises upon you. You watch what's coming next. They walk down to Egypt. They get there, the officials tell Pharaoh, and Pharaoh calls for them. You know, I always I, I want to imagine. I believe imagination is a gift from God. You see this? Building there. It was first in pastor's head. Then he put it on paper and he gave it to the architects to draw. I see Sarah there. 
when they're taking her. She looks back at her husband. Like, they're taking me. Mm. Abraham. Bye. Bye. <laughs> you know what happened there? Pharaoh starts giving him camels, male servants, and pays the Lord now for them, for her. Silver and gold. This guy takes it. Takes it. Then the Lord fights his battle, appears to Pharaoh and takes your neck. This is someone else's wife. Yeah. You must read the Bible. Yeah. He, he didn't give back the camels, he went. So he went down to Egypt for supplies for the journey, the Lord. He, God will provide for you in a way that you will never think. Ecclesiastes 9, verse 11. I have seen something else under the sun. The race is not for the swift and the battle is not for the strong. Nor does food come to the wise. <coughs> Or wealth to the brilliant, a favor to the land. This gives me hope. Hope. Mm. But time and chance happen to them all. Yes, thank you, Lord. You know, I'm from the old school. Thank before you. boilermakers were there. Mm. Hey? There was a accident. They used to put the iron in the fire, right? Mm. Till it turns red. And then they say, strike while it's hot. Because if you miss your God given opportunity, and it cools down, you'll have to strike many times. But if you strike at the right time, at the, and you don't know when that cycle will come back again, if you miss your God-given opportunity. Yes. Mm -hmm. Don't miss your God-given opportunity. Mm -hmm. You watch for your God-given opportunity. When God says move, you move. Mm -hmm. If you read about great men of God in the Bible, uh, Abraham, it says, when God said you must move, he moved. Give your only begotten son that you love. He says, early in the next morning, he went. David is sent to the army to see how his uh, three brothers are, are doing. It says, early in the morning, David left. If he left late, he would have missed the, <coughs> that opportunity. <coughs> Excuse me? The when Goliath is coming out. <coughs> he would have missed that time. When God says, move, move. And if he says, like, I see my cousins over yet. So let's, sister. Praise the Lord. Yeah. Bless I'm sure she's God. looking at me and saying, you, you are a miracle. Because she knows when I used to have a long tape and measuring the road this way and that way. And that way. When I look at people, I see two. And the Lord called me by name. One day. Finished. I came home, I told my wife, he said, you know what? We are never touch a dog again. She said, oh, it's Monday, my boy. <laughs> she didn't know, man. Dr. Peter, don't tell anyone. I, 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 I used to go to Friday and pay, pay first day. Never mind my children. I pay there, I'm fixing up for Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday I'm going to pay, and I fix. You see, I didn't know the Lord, that enemy is using my gifting for himself. When I left, they were missing me because I was leading them. I knew how to make a plan when there's nothing. And now when I'm building a church, I know how to get cement. Hey, and my wife is always there. We got the neighbor and we got the time, we got no money, Pastor. She said, I was looking at your card. I said, what? I was looking at your card. Why have you got this labor? Let's, it never comes back. But it comes back in many other ways. Yeah. 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 Hey. hey, God. He's a miracle working God. Hey. Hey. Don't hey. turn from me. Hey. It's too late to turn from me. Yes. 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 Say, moreover, verse 12. Moreover, no man knows when his hour will come. No, not to die. When God has opened that door, that no one can close. Amen. You know what? You've been fasting for years. You've been coming to Pastor Peter's church. Whatever he says, you're doing it. And it just doesn't seem to work. One day they tell you that Pastor Peter's having a conference. And you say, I've been to many of those. I've prayed, I've fasted, and nothing happens. And someone new in the Lord will come and say, okay, come with me then. 
Let's go. There's 3,000 people. Be so disappointed, be so discouraged. You know, one time I went to an evangelist meeting and they said, all those who are discouraged, lift up your hands. You know, I was so discouraged. I couldn't even lift up my hand. I asked this guy next to me, just... You know, <laughs> and you're discouraged and you're sitting right at the back. And then God's spotlight is moving around. The Lord's eyes go to and fro. And the spotlight stops on you there. And they say, you, my sister with the red top, they're calling you. And you say, no, they've called him this side of me and that side, it can't be me. And it's you on that day. Your God-given chance. And that day, when it's yours, moreover, no one knows when his hour will come. As a fish is caught in a cruel net, a birds are taken in a snare. So men are trapped by evil tongues that fall unexpectedly upon them. Maybe you've been abused, man. And you think it's not me, it will never work. Hey, God has got a way. When you think you are finished, he says, now I will start. He said, when there was dead people, he said, they're sleeping. Huh? Hey. This God of ours. Hey. Titus's daughter. But we got to grab our opportunity like the woman with the issue of blood. God never takes everything from you. She, had, she was weak. She spent all her money on doctors. But she could still hear. And she could crawl. And she heard that he's passing by. Jesus was by. And she said to herself, only if I can touch the hem Jesus of his garment, only if I can touch the hem of his garment, I will be healed. She's singing it to herself and building herself up and she crawled amongst the people and she touched him. The creator of the heaven and the earth came to a stop, dead stop. He says, someone touch me. Peter says, oh, oh. They're pressing against you. You, you know, and he's, oh. he says, I felt virtue. She felt power leave me. I always say she pickpocketed him. <laughs> she didn't ask him then. What do they say if they steal your wallet? Hey? They don't ask you. Amen. She touched and she siphoned. He stopped. He said, someone touch me. And she came trembling and said, it's me and gave her testimony. Why are they talking? Jairus' servants come and tell Jairus, don't worry, the, the, the teacher. Your daughter is dead. He turns around to Jairus, he says, whose report will you believe? Shh, don't listen. Don't listen to him. We're going, we're going to see this thing through, boy. Eh? Hey? Jairus' daughter is 12 years of age. This woman has an issue for 12, 12 years. years. There's sometimes when things just line up for you, you God given opportunity. And people will say, how did, how did you know? And you say, I don't know, but I just knew. <laughs> when things line up, 12 years, Jairus' daughter, 12 thank years, the sickness. No one knows. And it says as a fish is caught in a cruel net and birds are taken in the snare. So men are trapped by evil. You know, sometimes you just got, you see a talented man. And I think this guy would get so far if he could just listen, let me coach him. No. What happens to a fish caught in a net? It never swims the way it was meant to swim. What happens to a bird that's caught in a cruel snare? It never soars the way it was supposed to soar. Today, family, let's rise. Let's function the way we are supposed to function. It never soars the way it was supposed to. So because it's caught in dust. Sometimes it's good because you've done something. And you say, well, God can never use me. 
Moses was a murderer. He murdered. That was a human being he murdered over there. Paul was a murderer and he writes two thirds of the New Testament. <laughs> Don't die where you are. Don't die where you are. Okay, I think I've got to hurry up now. Romans chapter 5. I'm not taking long. I think the praise and worship was longer. <laughs> um, and I'm talking to this young man. He just looks away. They close, bastard. <laughs> no, I'm only talking about this. Yeah. Romans chapter 5, verse 1. Therefore, since we have been justified through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, the powerful, through whom we have gained access by faith into this grace in which we now stand. We are blessed. We rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. Right? Not only so, but we also rejoice in the suffering. No. Because we know that suffering produces perseverance. And perseverance character and character hope. Suffering produces, but you get stubborn in the Lord after you suffer him. You know what you say? You say, if he didn't kill me, then he can't kill me here. He should have killed me there. Now I know my God can deliver me, so he can't have me here. Rejoice, and it causes stubbornness, perseverance, and, and perseverance character. You know what God is allowing you to go through what you're going through? He's bringing up character. Have you been with someone with character? You meet them for 10 minutes and you're just in love with these people. You're drawn to them because of their character. Humble and... And you know, you meet someone and you, they show you that they know more than you, which is right, yeah. But don't show me. You feel like running away. Me, I ask, I say, where's the loo here? And I'm not coming back. <laughs> I'm gone for good. I'm gone. <laughs> character. God is trying to get character out of us. You know when someone comes to you and says, you know what? I've messed up. Yeah. I've sinned. You know what I did? I did this and did that. Don't say, how can you ever, how can you dare? They came to you because they're coming to fall yeah. on you. Help me. I've messed up. There's no reverse. I can't. I tell the church in a couple. But if a sinner cannot run into the church yes. and find help, Amen. you must keep ropes. Amen. Say, look, on, hang yourself as well. Mm -hmm. Here is the hope. Right. The church is the washing machine. Oh, Jesus. Praise God. You see? You come with your 30 overalls and everything, yes, yes. and your wife puts this overall and puts all more, non-name uh, non brand on me, one of your brother. And this machine starts winding up now. When the sinner comes into church, you point them to the cross and the blood of the Lamb of Jesus Christ. And you say, come with them, though they're red as crimson, they'll be washed whiter than snow. But first I've done this and that, hey, it's okay. You know, I didn't get saved for some time, Pastor Peter. I used to think these people don't know what I've done. I'm a sinner, man. I didn't kill anyone, don't look at me like that. <laughs> I mean, I was a sinner. Whatever I did, I did it properly. So I don't see now when I come to God, why can't I do what I'm doing properly? Because I did it properly. I told you I squashed the lid. Because I don't need, I won't be closing this thing. Yeah. If it falls, then nothing's going to spill because I've spilt it. <laughs> right? I'm not ashamed. My God, He came and He called me. Yeah. 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 So, suffering. We're going to close. Job. We're cutting a long story short. I've heard people say Job's wife wasn't a good wife. Ha! Huh, I will never say that. I picture her one day, imagination again. She's standing with her husband. Her husband's full of sores all over. 
And they're standing there, they're looking at 10 graves. And these children, she carried each of their nine months. She was pregnant for 19 months. And she's thinking, there's the eldest, second eldest down. And she looks at the eldest, she remembers the first time she gave birth to him. Shane, you're so cute. And then she goes to the second one. And he, he was just different. And then she goes to the fourth and says, hey, I have problems giving birth there with that one, but hey, when he came out, he was very nice, and then the first time maybe the girl came, knew she was so cute, and she's actually got a faint smile on her face, thinking of that time. And then she goes on to the, to the ninth and then the tenth, and the kids, they're dead. My children are dead. A wind came and blew the house, and it fell on them. And yet my husband used to make sacrifice for these children after they've had a party in case they sinned against God. Hey! But look, where was God that time? Where was God in, in, in that time when they died? And she turns to her husband. And the Bible says he used to scrape himself with broken pottery, scraping his sword. He's scraping his sword, she looks at him. He says, my dear, why don't you curse him and die? Where was he? You used to sacrifice for the children, and look, they're gone, they're dead. So what do we do now? Let's curse him and die. Curse him and die. And she, he says, no, now you speak like a foolish woman. He says, must we bless him when things are good? And then curse him and think about it. You know, my dear, I know my Redeemer loves. <coughs> In other words, when he comes to deliver me, he'll come and deliver me, man. Amen. And you know, my dear, don't be slaying me, yet will I trust him. Man. Yes. And I'm reminded, my dear, that I, naked I came, and naked I will go <laughs> from him. You know, in chapter 23, after that, Job realizes that these tests are not to kill him, but to make him. Amen. He says, after I've been through the fire, may I come out as pure gold. He got double, right? Yes. Yeah. The Bible says he got double, I don't know how many thousand camels, and, and then he got ten children. But what I want to say to you, sometimes you go to the grave with still scars of the spot. You know what? The ten children didn't come back. They were gone, they were gone. So she went to the grave with still that scar, naming them. I know her three daughters are the most beautiful daughters in the whole world. But doesn't replace the first ones. So you carry scars of the Lord. I heard of two, three, I mean two students that were together in high school and in university and they were serving God. And they separated for 20 years. And they met again. And one of them said to the other, you know what, I've been serving God for 20 years, we haven't seen each other. And the other one said, show me the scars. And you receive scars from the sun. You know when David went to the king, King Saul and told him he's going to sort the life out. I believe when King Saul said, Listen, you can't fight this man. He's a professional. He's a professional killer. He has killed many. I believe. David says an amazing thing. thing. Goliath has been coming out for 39 days. This is the 40th day. And he comes to King Saul, he says, do not let anyone's heart be troubled here. God is advertising him in the whole of Israel. There are 33,000 maybe soldiers. Why? So when it's time to be made king, they say, who else but yeah. David? You remember how what he did in the back then? Who else? Right? And, and King Saul says, no, you cannot go in. And David says, 
do not let anyone say, I can take him out. He, uh, you know what King saw? When there were no cameras, TV cameras, and everything, me, I killed a bear and a lion. Look here, this is the bear. This is a scar of the bear, and here. And this is the scar of the lion that I killed. It will be the same with this uncircumcised Philistine. And you know what the king does? Takes his armor, his own armor suit, and he puts it on David. Hey, we haven't got time. You remember what Elijah did to Elisha in 1 Kings 19, verse 19? He took his, his cloak and he put it over Elisha as his successor. Are y'all with me? Yes. Now King Saul takes this armor man and he puts it on this boy. The ones that are standing, Eliab, his brother, David's brother, that said, hey, you, you, yeah. evil heart, and yet God said he's one of man after his own heart. They're looking at and someone says, hey, the king is putting on his armor. They say, no, no, it's that young man that was here. He's got the king's armor. He's showing him where he's going to. That one day you're going to be king, you. I'm putting this thing over you. And David says, no, I can't take this thing. I can't use it. Why? He hasn't been through the process of wearing this thing out. I must be in the, in the desert maybe for seven, eight years or ten years. I don't know. First, before I come and wear this thing out, he said, of course I am. And you know what happened. So Job got double. Let's just run through Joseph quickly. I'm closing. Joseph is comfortable. He's full of coat of many colors. He went looking after the sheep and the cattle. And his brothers, he came back and he thanked them for doing something. He must have killed one of the lambs and had a bride. He came and they didn't like him. But again, it was worse that he had. This coat of many colors that his father loved him more than all of them. <clears throat> now God must get him out of this comfort zone too, where he's going to be useful. Right? Yes. Cut a long story short. Your father says go uh, with food. Take food for your brothers and find out in there. He comes to them. This boy didn't eat on the way, man. Thinking I'd sit with my brothers and eat. He should have eaten before he got there. Because they take the food and then they put him in a pit. I can see them sitting on top and eating the meat and throwing the bones into the pit, mocking him. Where is the dream that I had? He had a dream, he had two dreams. His father asked him with the second dream, what is the dream that you have, my boy? What is the dream that you have? Will your mother and I come down and worship you? Come down with Egypt, saying it, but he's not realizing. They say he goes down to his house. He's accused. He ends up in the dungeon. Why does God do this? You can never be a true ruler if you haven't been down there. I talk to alcoholics, and they know that I know the pain of him because I've been there. I don't read it in a book. It was me. He took me down there so I can help others in the dungeon because you can never be a true leader if you don't know how it tastes down there. Yes. And another thing, he was falsely accused. When he's going to judge someone, he's going to think, is this young man falsely accused like I was falsely accused? So I must be careful when I judge. The desert teaches you something. Then two men from the king's palace come. The baker and the cupbearer. One day him, who's supposed to be sad because he's innocent of, he doesn't deserve to be here, he comes. He sees their faces are sad. He says, why are your faces so sad? They say we have dreams. You know what I would have said, my boy? Right? When they say, it's, it, it, I would have said, listen, I'm here, it's through dreams. <laughs> Don't tell me. Don't tell me about dreams. He says, isn't God the interpreter of dreams? Come here. The cup here shoots fast. 
He says, you, you're going to be restored to your position again. And the other one comes and says, God, we're to eating the bread. And he says, you, in three days' time, it's your neck, you go. He's wishing I, I wish I never asked him to interpret my dream. <laughs> three days come, exactly that happens. Before they leave, Joseph, you remember I told him my wife pokes the keg, pulls it out. Joseph trying to make his own plans. Say, so say, when you get to the king, remember there's a Jewish Hebrew boy here that's innocent. <laughs> the Bible says he goes and he forgets. How can you forget? It's God that has deleted it from him for a certain time. time, time. And Joseph is only 28, and the only time he can function is when he's 30. Two more years, you gotta wait, my boy. Joseph didn't know that, yay, my God can make kings dream. The king started dreaming. Cause all his nyangas and throat bones and nothing happening, man. Nothing. Yay. The cup bearer pulls out he, Joseph's CV. Yeah. And he reads it to the king. I know of a man. At the fullest of time. In the fullest of time. In the fullest of time. Ah, the the of time. In the fullest of time. And another <laughs> thing we can miss. Another thing we can miss. What really brought Joseph out of there? Okay? Helping other people with their dream. You know why you're here? You to help this man, Pastor Peter, Ward. And then you'll be awarded. If you help him with his dreams, you'll find that at home things they are starting to work out. We, you know, we paid up our car, and our house is only so much there. It's because you're helping this man fulfill his vision and his dream. You helping him. Hey, 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 hey. Yes, sir. Yes, the sir. king calls for him. Thank you, Lord. They call him up. I can see him down there. He, he, he had a thicker mattress than the others because he was in charge this morning. Wherever he goes, Potiphar's house is in charge. Here in the dungeon, soon they make him, put him in charge. He's got a thicker mattress he's making his way. And he's thinking, I'll see you tonight. He's wrong. He will never see that bed again. They call him up here as a shower. He tells them, I've had a shower. They say, you're going to re-shower here. Yeah. You want to shower again. You're going to meet the king. They put a robe on him, this boy. From prison to praise. He goes and he sits. The king calls him. The king says to him, I hear you interpret dreams. He says, no. But God will show Pharaoh what is to come. He sits down. Pharaoh tells him the dream. He says, Ah, oh, this dream is two dreams meaning the same thing. Seven years of famine, seven years of plenty. King, you better get a wise man. Right? To monitor the seven years of plenty that you made carry you for seven years of famine. And he's getting up to go back to the dungeon. Because now. The potter has dealt with him so much. He's, he's pliable, he's clay that he's ready for anything. If I'm going back to the dungeon, it's praise the Lord. When he gets up, the king says, hey, hold it. Mm, that's all. Who else but you? Is it? <laughs> Be faithful to the man of God. There's a time coming Maybe when the light will shine and say, yes. who else but you? He sits down again and it says all the officials agreed with the king. It's something when you get promotion from the pastor and all the elders say no. But it's something else when the elders say we were thinking of that. It's confirmation I was thinking this guy must be promoted. Who else but you? I'll stop you. Help the man of God? One day it will be said who else but you? Amen. 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 Amen.